There's some new uh, DRE laws coming down the pike. We don't want to scare everybody too much, but we might just start trying to get in a little bit. And then I, uh, Gary and John, a few of those have been here for a while. We need a little brief history of Connect and all of some of the some of the directions that we're heading to, which are kind of kind of new. So I'm going to introduce Dave Searcy. If I see anybody starting to nod off, I'm going to. You know, like <laughs> the DRE law stuff is not really exciting, but it is it's low hanging fruit right now. Um, we have, Mostly, I already told this story too, but uh, we met with the investigators and then the attorneys, and then uh, Sue from our office has been there for 37 years, so we got this right from right from the source. But they had uh, 2,400 people that used to be in licensing that were switched over to enforcement, and as of the first year, they're going to start collecting fines directly from agents. So, talking about five, ten thousand dollars. So, we're going to get in front of tell you everything we need to do. It's a video, you know, but, so don't worry about it, but some of the other people that aren't compliant. In the old days, they got slaps in the hand. In the new days, you can get five, ten, twenty thousand on five. So it's kind of important that you do it right. We just had a meeting with our uh, transaction coordinators to make sure that they were giving everybody the rights to, to do. So we'll try, you know, do whatever we can to keep you out of trouble, we'll keep ourselves out of trouble. And the biggest thing is, at the Department of Real Estate, if you do make a mistake, as long as it's not fraud, you're okay. Really, you just try to fix it and you go forward, but they're, they've got a ton of criminals that they're after, right? <laughs> and I'm glad. Because if you, how, how many people have done a transaction with a criminal in the last year? <laughs> oh, no hands? <laughs> but there, there's a lot of stuff that's been pretty... How about, how about when you write an offer and it never gets presented? You know, I mean, come on. That stuff isn't right. There's this thing called ethics that's in there, too. So I like the idea of everybody playing under the same so we're going to be in front of it. So, hey, Cersei. Thanks, John. Some words of wisdom. We're having some more of these rates, so there may not be enough to go around. So if you happen not to get one, raise your hand. And Sue's making some more, so I'll just let you take one and pass it back, please. So, you know, like John says, there's nothing. Right here. They'll come back up. We'll get some more for you guys. There's nothing to be afraid of. Basically, one of the things, we're all professional. How many of you are professional realtors? Raise your hands. Okay. How many of you stay resourced up and might have a return? You stay resourced up? Resourced up means that you're staying involved and you're keeping yourself knowledgeable on all the things that affect your business. That includes contracts, changes to contracts, interpretations that come down on contracts, how you use them, and the new things that come along that don't you touch it. <laughs> so, so, so that way you, you stay in front and you have an understanding. There's some things that you learn that it's like, you know, that's above my pay grade, it's out of my traffic lane, but I heard it, hey client, here's where you can go find it. You know, hey, I heard this, I know there's a change in how DRE is looking at the appraisers, here's where you can go find it, or call an appraisal company to get some more information. What I have done for you is being passed around and get some more made. I took some major <coughs> stuff out of 30 pages of changes that came down from the California Association of Realtors <coughs> on stuff that takes effect January the 1st. Uh, some of it has to do with loans and that kind of stuff. There's one thing in there that I found interesting talking about people acting as a, as a licensee doing loans, National Mortgage License Officer, um, which falls into some of the short sale negotiators, and they're going to be looking at that. There's, they're going to take a hard look at that. Uh, there's a conflict. basically says if you do anything that negotiates a loan, that smells like you're negotiating a loan, you need to have a, a mortgage license for it. So, And Sue's got some more of these that we're going to hand out because we have a bunch of folks missing. What I did at the top of this, I gave you the reference sites, the CAR website, so you can go in and pull up this whole document. And I have a clean copy that I'm going to leave with C on the thing. And the second thing is CAR Real Legal Newsletters. If you put that in your computer, I subscribe to that. All the stuff in here that has four stars, not only came out in their notice, but came out in a newsletter saying, pay attention. It's sort of like the red flag little thing. So I'm not going to read through this. I just want to hit the highlights. Um, but I wanted to provide you something that you could have in your hands and take a look at. Do you mean three stars, Dave? Three stars. 
Excuse me. We're all five-star realtors here, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did anybody get one of those and things that says, congratulations, you're now a five-star realtor? You've been selected by your clients in Sacramento County, blah, blah, blah. You know, we, we received that the other day, and so we started calling. It's like, oh, if you want to advertise in the Sacramento Magazine, a full page is 3,000, a half page is 2,000. Then I said, not interested. And they said, would you like to buy the little logo that goes behind your name? So I said, you know, that'd be pretty good. That's a good promo thing, right? The little logo is 395 bucks. <laughs> so it's like, you know, what a scam. So let's get started. The first thing in there that I put down for you is requiring ID for fictitious business names. I know that John and Sue are going to be working on fictitious business names next year. That's a big item out there. Dave Searcy does businesses, Searcy Company Inc., also Real Estate Inc. If I am doing that under Connect, that DBA has to be moved over to John for me to do business that way. If you're out there using NorCal Team, Connect Real Estate, you need a DBA. It needs to be licensed. But Sue will take care of that. Just know that there's some changes coming down the road with DRE and, and how you apply and the type of documentation you have to give them. Disclosures on gas. Everybody remembers the big explosion in Oakland? There's now a disclosure. It's a part of your CAR form. The CAR form is being revised. But just know that that is a part of the information. And you know, have them check the box. Have your client move on, don't make any representations, because you and I do not know what's running underneath most of these properties. I would suggest you read your, your prelims, and if you see an easement, make sure that you have that easement pulled and provide a copy of that easement to your client. I think that's just prudent real estate. Okay? I'm sorry? My guess is it will become a part of the NHD because it's such a big issue. But one of the things that I always like to do with, you know, as, as a mitigating factor is when I get a prelim in any property that I list or sell, I go through and if I see an easement there that is different from something that's normal, I ask for them to pull the easement. And you, it's surprising what you find. Discrimination against grooming and dress. Uh, they now have come out. You can't discriminate, make fun of, etc. if you've got... Beards, turbans, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, apparently that's becoming a major issue, especially with world affairs and what's going on with people <coughs> doing the wrong thing. So please pay attention to that. Pursuing easement owners for maintenance costs. How many of you have ever sold a property that has an easement on it? And how many of you have ever been asked, well, what happens if someone doesn't let me use it, right? And, you know, my answer has been, well, everybody signed this little agreement so you all get together and talk. What this basically does in a short sense, it takes it away from moving that from an arbitration to those affected parties can actually take it to small claims court or superior court. So now when you sell a property with an easement, you just refer them to that. Don't make any representations. How many of you have ever heard me before? You know, my little representation to my buyers and sellers are I'm not an attorney or CPA, I make no representations, guaranteed warranty, express or implied, everything I say to you is based on my contract, my broker's license. Do we understand that? Then I tell them, you know, what I know and make sure they go check it yourself, okay? Foreclosures. That's helping the homeowners uh, keep their homes. The new law prohibits lenders from engaging in dual tracking. How many of you have had a short sale going only to be told when you got your short sale approved that the house went to foreclosure at the same time? I mean, those of us that have been doing business, I've probably had a dozen of those over the past couple of years. This law is prohibiting that. So what it's telling you is that the new law, January 1st, says if they, you're in a short sale transaction and they're negotiating with you, they can't be dual tracking you in the foreclosure at the same time in real simple terms, okay? Unfortunately, it's not retroactive. Unfortunately, it's not retroactive. Yeah, I know, I lost a, a deal down at Campus Commons. We actually had approval in two condos and we're going in to sign papers and we're told they went to foreclosure yesterday morning. It's like, okay, yeah, how does that happen, right? So where do we get this, you can go in, you just go right to it. Yeah, go right up here, and all I did with this was cut and paste. 
you know, so I would take and I would go while this is still on, online, and I would go to this website and get the ones that you're interested in, cut and paste it, put it in your document save, so whenever you need it, you know, how many of you want to have that little extra edge? So someone asks you about an easement, hey, there's some new laws on easement, cut and paste and send it to your client and say, here's something that was provided by CAR Legal, um, you know, for your use. Just that little extra step <clears throat> makes you look really good, right? Anti-deficiency for refinance, that is not effective until January 1st as I read this, but what it basically says is that there's absolutely no recourse anymore after January 1st if someone refinances their house, gets an equity loan and defaults, they can't go after them personally in real simple terms. But it says that the new law extends the anti-deficiency protection to include any loan used to refinance the purchase money loan, loan fees, costs, related expenses for refinance. If it's a cash out, it does not apply. But if you refi down the road or finance down the road and you go into default, they can't come back at you personally. Pretty important law. Maintaining REO properties. I know some of you do REOs out there. And all they did is extend the law, Gary, saying that you have to make sure that's not a community blight, that your listings remain, properties remain presentable. Are they enforcing that, Gary, at all in the areas that you know of? Can anybody come out and check you guys out? City and county do some different things, but uh, I'd say Elk Grove's the one that enforces it more than anybody else. Okay. The next one under foreclosure is giving buyers of foreclosed homes the opportunity to correct. How many of you are working with investors? How many of you want to get out there and work with investors? You know, it is a hot, hot market out there. And there's a lot of properties out there that have notices from the city and the county where the numbers really make sense and your investors walk away because the minute that they close escrow on it, they get an abatement notice from the city or the county and they can't do anything. This law basically gives them 90 days to get in there and start doing what they need to do before the county can stop work on them. So it's a good little law. The HOA documents, I'm not going to bother reading that to you, but that basically you need to go through and read that. It's about what they can charge, what they can't charge, and um, if they charge you, they have to give back if they don't provide the services that they use. How many of you are using the CAR forms for homeowners associations? Okay, so whenever, whenever you're writing an offer on a property that has a homeowners, you want to make sure that you use the CAR forms and back on requesting documents and provision and responsibilities, okay? Because that pretty much covers what that says and will also help cover you on recovering fees if they don't perform. A lot of us have, have submitted money to an HOA. They haven't gotten back to us in time. That was a cost for the property not to close or for the buyer to bail in their investigation period. Then the homeowner says, well, that's okay. We're keeping the money. This basically says they can't do that anymore. Plus, they can't, they can't bundle fees on you. Jerry? Does this apply to collection agencies that take over those HOA problem trials? You know, I don't know. I didn't dig into it that far. But I know that there's another provision that's in here that says, remember how the HOAs won't let people in to investigate? Right. Uh, they actually passed a law that's in this bunch of stuff that says if I go to the gate and show them my little ID and that I'm there to investigate the HOA, they have to let me in. So, and it's really interesting because if you notice, all the laws are being changed to protect the consumer. You're seeing more and more consumer protection. One of the things that we really want to make sure of, and I don't care if we're Connect or Lion, <coughs> we all have to work together as a real estate community to police ourselves so we don't get more and more stuff governing how we do business. Uh, because they will govern us if we don't govern ourselves. So we just want to make sure that we stay resourced up and provide good information to our clients. Home and safety energy devices. A lot of us work with folks who are buying properties and want to sell in one or two years. I am not sure if this is going to come back and bite us retroactive. It says it starts January 2014. I have a call into some appraisers to find out what they're going to do with it, but this basically says that 
Effect of 2014, your smoke and carbon monoxide detectors have to be of the kind that they have a 10-year battery in them. They have to have the date of installation, the date that they've been checked. They have to be checked once a year. Yang, 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 yang. Okay? Not effective to January 2014, but something you should know about and pay attention to. My concern with this stuff is like carbon monoxide detectors, right? Who can tell me what happens right now when a trader goes out to one of your, your sales and there are no carbon monoxide detectors? Volunteer? He writes it up. What was that? He writes it up. He writes it up. Some of them only And it costs somebody, what, about 125 bucks to go back out. And that's one of the catch-22s. The law says it's not a point of sale item, right? Supposedly you and I are not responsible for that. But the law says as of January 1st, 2011, all single family homes have to have it. So the appraisers have taken it upon themselves that that becomes a point in their contract. So we become the enforcers. And I'm even seeing them called on, on investment properties now, on rentals. So, okay. Any questions so far? Landlord, tenant. A lot of you are dealing with I'll put these in here because a lot of us are selling properties that have tenants in, right? So the first one is disclosing, disclosing notice of default to a prospective tenant. If you have a person that is going to list their property or someone that you're trying to help and they want to lease the property to someone and it's under a notice of default, the tenant has to be notified before they do the lease. Um, you see this in short sales all the time. Uh, I've had a person have had clients go, well, we're going to move out and we're going to list with you in six months or, you know, when they get to that point that they feel like they, they need to list and they're going to rent the property. We're not involved in the rental side, but it would sure be nice to say, hey, don't forget, you need to let the tenant know that you have a notice of default on the property. There are some agents out there that are more involved than that, but just know that, they're, that there's an effective law. Does that make any sense? The 90-day notice becomes really important. A month-to-month -month tenant or subtenant in possession of rental housing at the time the property is foreclosed must be given 90-day written notice to terminate. For a fixed resident term tenancy, the tenant or subtenant can generally remain at the end of the lease term and all rents and obligations survive the foreclosure. There's four exceptions, and I have them up here. They're on a CAR form that is noted in there on um, when that does not apply. But I get asked all the time from agents if there is a tenant in the property and it gets foreclosed on, how long do they have to get them out? And I also they, then I get told, well, the seller and the buyer talk to the tenant and they've got it handled. Well, <laughs> they, need to, they need to know there's 90 days uh, that's effective. And while we're talking on that, I know that Mark has ran across it too. How many of you have sold a property, uh, the tenant tells the owner, or the owner tells the buyer, could be either one of the two, don't worry about it, we just need a couple more days and we'll get out. And everybody says okay and closes escrow. That ever happened to anybody? Oh, look at all the liars out there. I know that that's happened. I know that we've sold a property and the seller says, hey, I'll be out on Sunday and nobody does a, an addendum to the purchase agreement, right? We just sort of like let, let them stay. Remember, at close of escrow, the minute that closes in Kirsten's name and she is the new owner, I am a tenant at will in the state of California. I'm on a, on a 30 day. So the minute that happens, whether I am the old tenant or whether I'm the owner remaining in the property, I'm now a tenant. And it automatically converts to tenant law. So please make sure that if you have a situation like I had two weeks ago where you get a phone call Friday, the sellers aren't going to be off to Sunday, that you scramble and put together the proper documentation so that way you're protected. Okay? Let's move to the last page. Just Disposing abandoned property for less than $700. I know that Gary had one of these where the property closed. This is aimed at landlord tenant. So remember what we said when the escrow closes, you own the property, the owner becomes 
basically the tent, and they still have stuff in there. Before, you could take and get rid of property that was 300 bucks. Now they have moved it up to 700 which is great. Uh, so $700 street value, that keeps Tammy from having to make a list of all the property, take pictures, put it in storage, and notify everybody in writing. So that is a really good, good change to the law. If that happens to you and stuff is left behind, before you start disposing of stuff, you know, we all have phone, iPhones, and make sure you take pictures and document it really well. Um, Gary, was that to you a year ago? Somebody from Connect had some stuff in a house, and when you looked at the pictures, it just looked like garbage, and they threw it out. And the seller came back and said, that vase was my great-great-grandmother's. It was from 18-something, and it was worth X number of dollars. And it was like, okay. You know, so just, but it's a great new law. It really helps, you know, helps us from having to do a bunch of stuff. Military service I put on there for you because it basically, I have one right now with a young man coming back from Afghanistan. And his property is in foreclosure. We have actually gone to that and said that you can't do anything for nine months. So if you're dealing with people of military service that are coming back, that's a, a good tool. In a very quick nutshell, that those are the ones that I think affect you the most and the ones that they sent out a second time that says these are the things to pay attention to. Are there any questions on any of that? That's a that's drinking from a fire hose, I know. And you know, there's a lot of stuff. The thing is, is take your time, go online, just read through the stuff. There's a bunch of other stuff in here that deals with mobile homes. How many of you are already up with mobile homes? Mobile home parks, manufactured housing. There's some new laws in here on that, on what they can do and not do. You know, just make yourself aware that the stuff's out there. I don't try to memorize the things. I just like to know that it's there. So my little red flag goes up, and I can go back and check it. And with this day and age, you, know, you can load this into notes and carry it around on your phone. So you have it readily handy. Any questions? Quiet. John. Hey, buddy. Appreciate it. Thanks. My pleasure, sir. Not one head nodded. Yeah, that's, <laughs> <proud of yourself. laughs> that's not. That's some pretty dry information, but it's great to have that. And again, January, a lot of that stuff's going to roll it out. So, kind of, I'm going to kind of spin out. This means a little different, and I want to thank our guests for being here. If any time you get like you want to run out the door, it's okay. We understand, but we're glad to have some guests here today. So I appreciate that. Uh, we're going to talk about a little bit of the history of Connect and some of the directions that it's going. So, if you're interested in Connect, you'll be maybe fascinated by it. If you're if you're not, then you're under the door. We understand that's okay. It makes for rain. But we're um, um, it's kind of part of the reason I want to talk a little bit just about the history of Connect is because I don't really know it. I've been finding it out. I've only been here since March, and things are changing on a, a rapid basis. We've got everything. I think we're ahead of the curve. In in terms of the Department of Real Estate and all things are going, so feel really safe. It's a safe environment to go out there, do your thing. We've had some uh, things going with our errors and emissions, as everybody does. We find out who we have and what they're doing, and the attorneys are available. So, I'm ready to go to the next phase. So, I've been really trying to work with Gary and Lori and Dave and John and Jerry, and everybody that understands network marketing a hell of a lot better than I do, because uh, part of the history is we're, we're going into a new phase of the history. And that's that they are coming out with a new compensation plan, which we haven't seen. Uh, and, and what I like about it and some of the, uh, the changes in the past is they've talked about, you know, they just would send out a memo on a Friday afternoon and just say, this is the way things are now. Uh, what we've been promised is that this compensation plan that's going to come out, they're saying sometime next week, they're going to finish their first draft of it. Then they're going to take it to um, a group of, uh, of us leaders, 10, 15 people, get some tweaks to it, hey, this will work, this will work, and then get a chance to get it out to everybody uh, so we can have some input in the, in the whole situation, which I'm pretty excited about. But the one thing that I've been assured is that the, the, the major components of it, which has always made Connect different, and that's where I'm going to get some of the experts in here to talk about it, but which has always made Connect different than other people is that there's a, a true uh, profit share residual income model to it where you can bring people in and get 
be a money in it. They said that's not going to be taken away. It may be altered, it may be changed, we all have some input into it, but it'll be better than anybody that is out there is what I'm being assured. And the other part that I really like, I don't know, it might only be one, but they said everybody that's uh, going to be a part of Connected the first year are going to be able to get some stock options. Uh, right now they've been kind of sent out on an award basis, and again that's something that that's what attracted me to the company when I'm sitting around having a having a beer after golf with the CEO and, and I thought, well, I, I've had a Century 21 brokerage for years, really happy with it. What's in it for me as a broker? And I, I wasn't interested. You know, but then when he mentioned profit shares, started doing a little math and started talking about stock options. The goal of this company is to be is selling it, selling Connect Real Estate within four to five years. So. What I'd like to recommend is you try to get a hold of as many stock options as you can. Now, they're, they're looking to sell to somebody to keep it as Connect, but it's kind of a unique situation. I've never seen it in real estate before, is that you all can be part of a company when it sells. Now, right now, I came over, we got a lot of stock options, which are valueless right now, but if this company is going to go to the heights that they think it will, it'd be kind of fun um, to, to think about if you had, name a number, 5, 10, 20, 100, 200,000 stock options. The, the CEO of this company, and I researched him before I came, his previous two companies sold at better than $30 a share. So, you know, if you're going to be listening and selling and doing real estate anyway, it kind of makes sense to, to really buy into the company, and that option wasn't available anywhere else. So, uh, that's what's got me, again, the most excited about what's going on with the company. And I, and I really do believe it, it's going to be, I'm imagining some arm wrestling when we go through it. Anytime you're making a change, you're changing compensation models. We went through this in Century 21 on a couple different cases. It's not just Connect, it's everybody. Everybody's trying to figure out how to keep their doors open. Agents are moving around. Independents are lining the franchises. Franchises are going independent. Nobody knows which way to go. This is throughout the country. Don't know. Um, the thing that I'm excited about is that they're rolling out phase two. We're working on it now where we can actually bring brokers into Connect and they can bring their whole companies in. So we're going to have a franchise model where people can buy into it. And that, you know, again, I don't understand network marketing as well as I should. I'm learning. But to me, that's the way that we can do it pretty quickly. Because you can bring a broker in and they can, the way they've been doing business for the last 20 years, they don't have to change anything. But they can tie themselves in with the Connect. And, and the, the part that I want to be really, really careful of, and I've got that, uh, Jerry and Dave and John also work for We'll be really careful to put criteria in place so we don't bring in any knuckleheads. I mean, the last thing you want to do is, oh, hey, look who just bought a Connect franchise. Uh, are you kidding me? I, you know, it, it, they've got to go through some pretty good paces. And, and, you know, credit checks, security checks, background checks, reference. You know, because when I bought my Century 21 16 years ago, they didn't do any checking. If you had a, a $25,000 check, you're in. And three of the four guys that bought in the same week that I did should have never been allowed in, and that's an issue. So anyway, um, that, that's that's part of the change. Now, one of the things that I'm trying to learn, we have several of the network marketing folks in here that were came from Amway backgrounds, built huge Amway companies, Dave, um, Steve, so that, and, and the network marketing aspect, which, again, something that we know more in, a lot of different groups, and that's a big part of and they're teaching at Cal Berkeley now. They're teaching some of the major schools. Network marketing is a big deal. So I really think the real estate going forward, we're going to have to know something about it. So Amway, which I found out reading this book, you got to be like Rich DeVos. DeVos or DeVos? DeVos. DeVos. Yeah, I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn. Um, Amway was American way. You know, there's people coming in. I read this. And him and Walt Disney, and I, you know, again, I'm kind of a big Disney fan, but for our own individual businesses, he talked about three different people, and I'm kind of looking at myself saying, man, I, I think I'm, in, in the course of a day, I'm probably each of these. But one is, do you want to be a, a well poisoner? We get all excited. We're seeing a lot of it now. People get a real estate license, they're all pumped up, and then somebody in their family said, what would you do that for? <laughs> <laughs> you're going to go get a real estate license? And, whether, and the same thing, once you're in the business, I'm going to go hold an open house. I'm going to go knock on doors. And, oh, that doesn't work. Yeah, and there's, there's probably more well poisoners in our business than not. And that's why if you look at some national averages, the average income per real estate agent hasn't really changed much. It's, a, it's under $5,000. It's like, well, why would you get into the business now? And include, it used to be the 80-20 rule. Now it's more like the 95-5 rule. 
at about 5% of the people that are making 95% of the money. So you go into any office, and meaning anywhere, anytime, and you've got several people that haven't closed an escrow, and you've got two or three people that have closed way more than their share. And, and when you sit across from somebody that's made a million dollars in commissions, you pay attention to what they're saying. And what, what's nice about the industry is that we have, we have some people that could do it in the connect. Uh, we have some that are getting closer, but it's we have seven areas that have done it. It's, there's no ceiling to what you can make. Conversely, there's no floor. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes we joke about a real job. Not a, so well poisoners, the ones that tell you it won't work. The other ones which, um, lawnmower, those are people that just take care of their own stuff. They don't care about helping anybody else as long as their stuff is going okay. Uh, just, just a lot more. And the one we want to be is, uh, like, like Rich, still last name for me again? He boss. He boss. Puts so much money back into helping everybody else out. Like and that's what the true model of Connect that came different from everybody else is helping people. And if you're successful, somebody else is going to be sick. I call it a life enricher. You know, think about those three categories. How could they be any more different than that? One of the things that impressed me the most when I came into this group was the number of, of life enrichers that were out there that were trying to make their life better, helping other people, realizing the more you make. And I've, I've sat through a lot of Century 21 meetings, and there's some great people over there, but I sat through hours and hours of broker council meetings where everybody's just trying to figure out how they can do it. And not, you know, talking about creating a community, doing some other thing. A little scary. So we got well poisoners, and again, my own world. It's going yesterday. <laughs> yesterday I was a well poisoner. I, I also managed to be a lawn mower, and I also tried to be, toward the end of the day, I might get a little slice of being a life enricher. <laughs> I'd like to kind of shift that over a little bit. So I want, uh, again, people that are, I've been bugging the heck out of trying to learn more about the Connect system, finding out some things that, that were started that didn't work, that, that did work really well, and so like we're all going to try to catch all this stuff. So I, again, in terms of history, some pretty big events are coming up in the next 30 days for this company, which there's a yawn right there. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. So it's going to be kind of a, yeah, yeah, it's all right, it's all right. Be kind of a free for all. And the King shirt, just in case you know, I don't know if they're going to win two more games in a row in the next two or three years. <laughs> if you ran the top, I know. I'm trying to be positive. But the odds, are, <laughs> the, the odds are the odds. If you went to Tahoe right now, the NBA has an 82 game schedule, and the Kings, if you wanted to bet all the money that you had, which depending on who you are, could be a lot. Um, if they win more than 29 games and you bet on the over, you get paid. And if you bet on the under, which <laughs> if I was the well poisoner, is if they lose 20. So it doesn't look, things aren't looking real good for the team again. So we don't have a strict dress code, but I, I forgot we had some guests coming. I apologize to the people who got standing up here in my you know, old King shirt from the season ticket holder since the day they came. So um, I just kind of want to open it up. I see some faces that we asked to come. They know a heck of a lot more about Connect than I do. It'll be part of the initial leadership group coming around and talking about. It. I think she's coming up. I think, as far as I know, Lori has the lowest number in the group. And Lori, I think, was the first one. They're very original. Means and so, if Lori, if you don't mind, we'll just kind of, kind of sure. get you started here and have yeah. at it. Yeah. <laughs> you can talk about real estate law for 25 minutes and not lose anybody. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's good to see you guys. Um, so I go back uh, back to 2007 when we really launched it in this area. There was a small group of us talking about this whole concept. I had been in title and escrow as a rep for eight years and um, had been dabbling in the idea of maybe I've had several agents say, you really should get into it. You should be an agent. But it was hard to step out of that comfort zone of that secure paycheck. And, you know, I had built a, a big, strong organization. And, um, but for me, uh, when I heard about the Connect model, when it was brought to me, I said, this is really different than anything else I've seen out there. I've got to explore this. And so I told my boss, actually, which was really a good move, I said, 
I'm going to just tell a few agents about this. We're going to look at this whole thing. I just want to kind of give you a heads up. I've invited a few agents and brokers to my home tonight because Connect has never had a public meeting before, and so we're just going to kind of explore. When I just put the word out to just a few people, word spread like lightning, and next thing I know, there's 80 realtors and brokers in my home that night. Yeah. They were looking for something like what Connect was offering. I mean, there was a, a, it was a small package of a cost for just a very robust amount of tools and resources that we could use. And quite honestly, that's how I was winning um, the loyalties of all these agents and brokers out there was offering them just, you know, piecemealing different resources for them so that they could build their business and therefore they would send me their, their business. Well, um, when we all saw this, we went, no brainer. So that night, um, I, or the next, very next morning, I said to my boss, there might be a few angry brokers out there, so just saying. <laughs> and uh, he called me the next morning, he said, you weren't kidding. My phone is ringing off the hook with people who knew about this meeting last night. And so, yes, you mentioned that you would turn in your resignation. I'll take it. Ooh. I mean, that's how, that's how strong Connect hit right out of the gate. But it was a really good move, you guys. Even in 07 when the market started tanking, <laughs> um, it just was a really, really good move. We had hundreds of agents come on board. And, of course, you know the model. You know, you get a little piece of everybody's pie and um, introduced it to a few key people, and those people introduced it to others, and thus the team that we have here. So every time one of you guys make a sale, uh, my husband and I do a rain dance. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, though, it's really been neat to see how the whole thing is gelled. We have had a ton of transformation from the, from the day that we started. We had a different CEO. That switched over. There's been different leadership teams, people coming and going within the company, as any organization, healthy organization does. You have to ebb and flow and change and grow. And so, um, you know, Connect has been a, a real blessing in our family. And uh, that's how we got started. So is that what you were kind of asking about? No, no, no rules. Just okay. Uh, <laughs> free wheel up here. So there's been some, some key players on my team that have, have come on board and actually they're now my leaders, um, Steve Hillier and Gary Meek and John. Um, why don't you guys come on up and, and answer a few questions too, if that's good for you. Yeah, I'm just gonna have. To, yeah. We're gonna have you pick out who you want to come next. <laughs> like I said, this could end up being a three-hour revival meeting if we have. To <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say this: one of the things that really um, attracted me to the Connect model was I've been a student of residual income for years. Most people that really earn a stable income leverage their time, leverage their money, or leverage their, their influence. And I didn't have a lot of time and I didn't have a lot of money. So um, leveraging influence has been key for me and that, that's why network marketing, um, I was exposed to it years ago. My husband's a pastor, we start churches, go into an area, never heard of it, we go into an area, start churches. I was working at IBM as a secretary and realizing my little month, my little hourly wage wasn't getting me anywhere. So when I got involved in network marketing, <laughs> it was kind of funny. I mean, our kids had holes in the bottom of their shoes and we're just trying to figure out ways. And I said, honey, I heard about this thing. We need to check it out and just see if that can help us a little bit. So we got everybody in the car. We drove about an hour and a half away when we were living in North Carolina. Stopped at McDonald's on the way and all we could afford was a hamburger for each person, a large fry for us to split between everybody, one large soda, we got four straws, one of our kids is real picky, he won't drink out of the same cup as anybody else, <laughs> so we got him a courtesy cup, and we all did our little thing and then went to this meeting. And when we heard about this concept, we maxed out all of our credit cards to get involved in this one company. I made a half a million dollars in one year that year. And that was back, way back in the early 90s. I went, okay, this residual thing is really something. That's really what opened my eyes. And then when the Connect model came about and they were talking about residual <coughs> income and real estate, that's really why my heart really did a, a pitter-patter. And as it turned out, it was really a good decision because to have real estate and residual together has been a blessing now.
just for me, but for our team. So thus, I introduced it to the Sitzler group, and uh, Steve was on the Sitzler team. And then uh, Steve, as you know, is quite a, a business builder, and he's taken this to all new heights. And so I'd love to hear what you have to say, Steve. Yeah, well, Sisla Realtors was a partnership I had with Roger Sisler and I, and Gary is one of our great players that we, we kind of had an idea of a little bit of a revenue plan where you could come on, and, and we had a very weak concept of something like Connect. So in 07, at the end, I was shared with what it was. I was just getting out of a really bad experience with Rich DeVos and Amway and things that weren't working out. But I had a lot of the, the dreams as far as building a team. So I thought, okay, this is what I do. I'm a full-time real estate agent. I actually want some kind of leverage. So I'm going to concentrate everything around how do you leverage yourself? You sell more houses? That's not leverage. That's just a straight commission. You build your database? There's a little bit of leverage there. But if you have 10 different agents that are working wherever, and you can influence them to work here because it's a better place to hang their license, that's probably the best use of your time. So in my business plan, I always dedicated just a little bit of time every week to introducing it to Mary or to Betty or Donna, these different things, these agents out there that were wondering, hey, how do I make it past the 20th when I had a commission on the 1st, but I've got no money from the 20th to the 30th? We all experience these things? You guys, the most powerful concept of earning a living is, is residual of some kind, where you can actually take a lever. In fact, Archimedes says, I can move the world if you give me a long enough lever, personally. You got a long enough stick, you can take the pressure and it'll lift whatever heavy object. So your heavy object is your personal budget. It's getting heavier, isn't it? Okay, well concentrate. Sales is 80% of what you do, but if you take 20% and you can build a small team and those team is better suited here working, isn't that a leverage factor? Yeah, and you refer agents in like John or Gary's done a great job. So I'm just gonna concentrate and tell you guys in the next 12 months, if you took 20% of your business model and dedicated it to just inviting agents to see if we're a better place to work, some agents are going to say yes. They're going to close escrows, and it's going to give you more consistent income. So the facts are very clear, and then it leverages from there because those agents have the same opportunity. And I look forward to the changes. You know, we're all going to you know, find the best place as far as how this works for us. You want anything to share anything, John? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to defocus the network marketing side for a moment, though. I'll say two things about that. One is uh, the word profit share has been thrown about. <coughs> we're not a profit share model. We're a revenue share. The difference is revenue comes off the top of a transaction. You're not waiting to see if we profit on that transaction. That's a very, very important factor. It makes us better than anything in the market in that regard. The bottom line for me is, though, if we can't sell real estate, and we can't prove to other agents and to their clients that we can sell their home or get them a home, there's no reason for anything else. So my view on Connect is a little bit different. I love residual income like anybody else. I'm a believer in that. But not everybody comes to Connect to, to get involved in that. So why would they come if they're not going to do that? That's one of my big questions and one of the things we need to address. I'm also, in my history, I saw the Connect placeholder website in 2006 or 2007, before they even launched the business, and I thought that looked really intriguing. I sent an email, never got a response because it was too early, and then Steve and I had a discussion about some business, and it was up and running at that time. I didn't take but about five minutes to figure out it was a place to go. But I had the, the uh, interesting situation where I became a vendor for Connect for the virtual tour platform that you use today as well as the original agent websites that were just retired in favor of a new, a new platform that they're, that they're working out. So as a vendor for the company, I got to take part in what I believe is the most important factor with Connect, that there's a technology package that you get, and the desire to give you a technology package and the tools that you have to sell homes. If we don't have that, we're not different and we're not special, but we do have that. And there are those of us, and I'm one of them, that have the opportunity to have an influence on that technology, how it's used, share ideas. And so if you're looking at Connect as a company to do business at for real estate sales, come do it for that reason. The cost is the lowest in the industry. Um, I have done hundreds of webinars with Steve, and we're able to proudly say 
you can't go anywhere and get the well-rounded package that you get with Connect. You get um, Realtor.com showcase listings at no cost. That's an expensive proposition. And that's something that we want you to be aware of. There's a very, very big platform of technology now. Is the company perfect in that regard? No. There's always going to be growth. We're looking at more mobility. You know, mobile-based products are becoming very important. I'm being forced to rebuild my entire virtual tour platform so that I can do that more efficiently, which we're in the process of starting right now. So be aware that if you're looking at Connect, or if you've been here for a while, there is going to be adjustment. We're, they're talking about it openly. We don't know what the revenue share will look like exactly. We still know it's going to be revenue share, which is a big plus. I do know the technology will continue to get better. We'll continue to build that. As the franchise model comes into view, that's going to be very intriguing for us as far as the technology side and the management of that type of a system. But just be aware that all of this is going to serve the needs of those who want to sell homes. If you can't sell a home, none of this matters. So that's really all I have to say. I think it's important to be aware of both sides of this. You can come to Connect. You can build a residual team if you'd like. I wholeheartedly encourage you to make it a part of your location. I've said it hundreds of times on webinars. But it's not the only thing to do. We sell homes. What will happen when we go to franchises? Will, will we be a franchise? That's that's still in the discussion the phase. I'm going to leave that to John for right so now. Will we be a franchise in our area? Will somebody take it over when they sell publicly? Uh, actually, no, there's no, no plans for that. Tammy, if I'm understanding right, would, would the current group be forced to be under a franchise? So what will we be then? It'd be, uh, it's going to be uh, like Century 21 and Prudential have, have done this uh, for quite a while. They'll have, they'll have corporate-owned companies and they'll have privately-owned, broker-owned companies. And they have the same model and they have, I mean, honestly, they don't have the same model, but they're, they're working the same kind of design. Everything's consistent. So that you know, but like you drove down the street right now and you saw a Century 21 sign. If you look closely, there might be an individual franchise, it might be a corporate owned. And of so course, will Century David Boatner still be a part of the company? Oh, or? absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And that's uh, that, and you'll see his name on the stock issue. So like I said, I don't know. How, how many people have stock options right now? Uh, so we've got a few of them already. How many people would like to have some stock options? How many people would like those stock options to be worth something? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, see, uh, uh, essentially, 21, and when I bought in, they, they went through several sales. When I bought, that's why every, most of you guys make fun of me for still having an AOL account. When I bought Century 21, Time Warner owned it, an AOL, so we all had everybody, so it was kind of a big deal. And they didn't know anything about the real estate industry and just got crushed. And they sold over to Sinden, and they worked it over by Cole Banker. Pretty fascinating stuff how that works. We have side people just listing and selling real estate, and then Sinden just made a huge killing. They sold their Cole Banker to Reality, Reality, something. And so they own it now, and they're, trying, they're struggling trying to figure out how it works. But if you can be in on the ground floor of Franchise sales, and I mean, does anybody know? Long answer to your question, Tommy. I'm, uh, Tammy, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. but um, does anybody know somebody like your your parents or your grandparents that bought the initial stocks of some small little company like you know, Apple, Intel, Intel, Intel yeah. and watched it go like yeah, just crazy numbers? That's where it can be on the, on the ground floor or something like that. Time to buy Apple again, by the way. Yeah, yeah. real quick. So um, yeah, and, but Tammy, you're a broker. We're going to be a broker. Going to be. Going to be a broker. So. It might be some point in time where Tammy said, hey, the, the franchise model looks better to me than the other model. Maybe, probably not, because you know, Tammy's worked her way to have a pretty good situation. Um, so I don't, I don't know. There's going to be, as John said, a lot of, a lot of stuff that's going to be, hasn't happened yet. But I can tell you that as of Thursday, the first franchise in California was sold for me. As Century Twenty, uh, <laughs> Connect, and Old David Realty. So we were negotiating way back, but we're not going. Like, yeah, I'm pretty proud of that. But it's kind of a, a you know a, an awkward situation in that, in that, that we have agents from Century Twenty One that have been with me, some of them for over, you know, I don't know, over twenty seven years. So you know they want to switch over from yeah they can come over, but it'll be everything will be separate. I think the Connects are much better model. That's why I'm here. But, but the, everybody that's already here, there's 320 at, at last count of agents in California that are part of Corporate Connect. We're trying to make their lives better with whatever changes we have, what's going on, and, and they'll get to the point. But a franchise, a franchisee like myself wouldn't be able to recruit 
anybody that's already over there. So we want to make sure what happened in the Century 20, what happened all over the boards is, is brokers started to get very aggressive trying to get people to come. In the old, old days, you couldn't recruit somebody else's agent. And now every time you close an escrow, who's closed an escrow and got at least five people trying to get you to come over? I mean, it, most of them were connect agents trying to get you to come over, but, but still they were never allowed before. And so all you do is, is make sure in the franchise agreement that, that you don't get to switch over and you don't have anybody left their term poaching. I'm a little bit even more confused now, uh, oh, going off of what Tammy <laughs> said, was talking about. You are a franchise holder now. Does that mean that we are part of that franchise, or does that no. mean that we are part of Connect Corporate? You're corporate. You're everything you've always been. Okay. And more. Does that mean that you're going to be part of our group? I'm, that's the part that's confusing. You'll have me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we'll, take, we'll take a vote in a little while. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't Charles. say too much more, we'll be okay. Yeah. It, it's going to be a little unique situation. I came aboard to be part of the franchise. And to be able to bring the brokers over, David Bowden we talked to me I mentioned that the current model as a broker wasn't that exciting for me because at the time we had uh, a lot of money already. Somebody said, <laughs> "No, we're going to lunch today." So I'm okay with that. So, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> no, and, uh, so we talked about as a broker at the time it, it didn't really make a lot of sense because you bring everybody over in a month. But he said, "I want to bring entire brokerages over." But they can buy in the Connect system. And to me, where you really see the growth is, is nothing too dramatic here, but is log signs. The signs have always been, and when I go to a region, I'm supposed to be the uh, regional uh, Western friends, well, I don't even know what town it is. So there's seven states that I'm supposed to be in charge of. And I visited a couple of them, and I couldn't find a Connect sign. So that's kind of not the market share that we're looking for. So right now, we're at about a 1% market share in California. And if we were to take that number to seven or eight or, or whatever, then your stocks are going to be worth an incredible amount. I mean, Lion got to the biggest market share ever in the Sacramento three county region, and they got up to, I believe it was 31 at one point. Does that sound about right? Jerry was the manager there for a while. But I think it's a little high. I think you're a little high. Yeah. They, 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 they hover between 25 and 30 for a long time, and I think they just broke that. And that's a huge market share. And then you drop down dramatically from that. So what I'd like to see. There's a lot of, a lot of you know, exposure in that. And I think that the pure model that you've had is much better. But it, was, it didn't really offer much to a, to a broker that had a group of, of 20 or more. Okay. So will the fee structure be different for an agent that belongs to a franchise? Will there be like monthly fees versus, or do they make like the 20%? Mm -hmm. The difference between the 80 and the 100? Is that what the owner of the franchise owner? Um, with, with like the, the, with the, the <coughs> like say you're starting a new franchise yeah. and people join your franchise, are they paying like a monthly fee to be a part of that or how is that? I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to dodge the question, but it just happened on Thursday. So I actually haven't come up with a fee structure yet. But we so are, it's your option on what you want to do? Yeah, I mean, but the office, the people that have been there for years, they probably would not switch if I try to change their program. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of the thing is I can come over and bring them. And again, this is just personal, not necessarily corporate. I don't have any problem and never have because of my new home back. I started selling new homes at 18. It's okay if phase one costs less than phase five. So if you came with me 27 years ago, it's okay if you have a better deal than somebody that, that joined us next week. I don't have any problem. I think that's fine. It, it gets a little bit dicey. That's one issue that I have. In general, is when the last guy comes over. Um, some of our competitors are pretty guilty of this. You've got a group of a pretty successful group, and they're at a certain split, and you really want to get that top dog from another company, and you offer them something much, much better than your group already has. I think that's the recipe for disaster. You know, and, and, and again, it's happening all over the place. And we're going to take advantage of that. And one of the things that I really like, I don't know where the new comp plan is going to be. I'm looking at people way smarter than me to help figure this whole thing out. But what it's going to be is consistent. So that when, when the next guys down the street decide that they're going to offer something different to get people in, we're going to be able to capitalize on, on that. Everybody should have the same deal. Or know what that deal is. Based on production, moving around, just consistent. So I don't know if I came close to answering any of those questions or not. But there's no more hands up, so I'll sit back now.
<laughs> any questions on technology or any of that part of it while I'm standing up here? So. Uh, I know there was supposed to be an option on the website to add pages, and I never really followed up on it. Is there still that? Well, the, the new sites are corporate developed, and uh, I don't think it exists yet. Hopefully they're aware that they will want to do that. The texting widget is not there right now, which I personally thought was a great sizzle item. But uh, when we have a chance to discuss more of this as they get them completely rolled out and smoother, um, those are things I'll be bringing up, to be honest with you. We need that kind of flexibility. And did they, last time I looked, they added like a recruiting part of just our basic connect without having to have a private one? Is that something they're going to continue to do? They've always had a, a corporate recruiting site in the, in the corporate.com mm -hmm. and that you'll be pointed to or that a user of your site will be pointed to. Whether you use the team builder that we've created over the years that really focuses on you and links to you directly or not with all the video is something you'll have to decide. I don't know that they're going to go to that. <coughs> have you heard anything like that at all? I haven't. I don't think, it, I don't, I don't think there are plans for that yet. Plans so the, the aftermarket recruiting site is actually more powerful, frankly if that's one of your big goals, and it's so inexpensive it should be taken advantage of. What about our MLS feature? Our um, IDX? What do you call it? Our ID IDX, IDX. Is, is there going to be a new and improved? The IDX has improved already as far as I'm concerned. It's the same vendor, but by by corporate developing it, they I think they've leveraged them a bit, you know, twisted arms a little bit to get a little bit better situation. I happen to like the new automatic uh, slideshow that will pick up every image from every property and create a enlarged slideshow. Um, it's, mis it's a misnomer to call that a virtual tour, it's not quite there yet for that. But it's certainly uh, one of the nice things they've done. Uh, remains to be seen how far, the, how far they'll go on the IDX, I don't know where that's going to end up. It is better overall right now, the search capability. What's the best way to get up to speed on all the di different technologies? I know we have sales mentoring. Is there uh, technology mentoring or? Uh, you know what? The uh, for me on the virtual tour side, I do an occasional webinar. I should probably make that more more common, and I will do that on that part. It's very easy once you've done it. I heard something yesterday, and Jerry, if I may share this, that that concerns me a lot, and we're going to have to address it as a company. Uh, there's a very powerful agent who's been using Realtor.com showcase listings for years, and I believe that that person's been with Connect for two years. Two plus, yeah. Did not know that they get that for free. They've been paying for it. That's the kind of thing. Wow. And I'm just, I'm just being transparent. When I hear about something like that, I don't know who those agents are. So note to you as well. We have to make sure we take care of that. That these agents know what tools they have. As far as training and whatnot, we'll make sure that that happens. They're, there are things in your back agent. Have you been to back agent yet? If you go in there, have you seen the videos on, on the various things? Mm -hmm. Okay, have those helped you? I haven't looked at them, but I know there's there is a place there to go to. And that's the place to start right okay. there. Yeah, that would be the number one place to start. You can contact uh, CS at connectreally.com, customer service, for questions on that. Anything on the virtual tour platform, contact me directly. Okay. Um, and we'll help you with all of that. But there will, there will be more emphasis on that as time goes by. We, we just have to grow that part of it as a company as well. Start at the back agent, though. That, there's a lot of information back there. John, you mentioned uh, training. Uh, do, who is our trainer? Do we have a trainer? Is it Ellen? Or? Oh, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I hope so. <laughs> Ellen, uh, you know, as of uh, you know, yesterday, she's not interested in doing our training right now. Uh, we're still kind of working on it. Uh, she's mentored a program, <coughs> it, but it, there were some gaps in the training, so we're trying to figure out the best way of, of covering that. So we're, we're looking at. I do want to increase our training dramatically, mm -hmm. but it needs to get out. To, I, I hear stories like that, and it just the, the training, the communication, has to be much different than it's been. So, Is she uh, the mentor then? I'm sorry. Is she the mentor, Ellen? No. Um, no. No. Uh, she, 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 my, the, the job is, the offer's on the table for her. But uh, based on the, the email that I got 45 minutes ago, I don't think so. I think she's, John knows her much better than I do. I think she's kind of ready to 
right into the sunset a little bit, or her husband wants to leave. She's at retirement age, frankly. Her husband's got a couple more years. They're very well set. Um, she's, she's very good at what she does. <laughs> she's she's kind of just stepping aside for now. I wouldn't say she'll never be back, but but right now she's not going to be the go-to person. Right. That's just the way it is. Um, the big thing, if I may, again, part of our technology package is the Rich Casto video-based training. If you've got a new agent, that's the first place to send them is digest that, do every exam, take notes, understand the, the Connect University and use all that. If they've got any desire to succeed, they're going to at least do that. And then the one-on-one -on -one needs to take place as well, which, of course, we're addressing. And then I did, I asked Gary to come on up and say a few words. I kind of want to be like a you know, open mic at the improv night. So I asked Gary, if it, Gary's put some huge numbers on the board right now. Would it potentially even put bigger numbers on the board? So that's kind of exciting. So, you know, I wanted to, uh, I, I didn't know if it was going to be a exciting meeting or not, but I thought I could make sure Gary kind of pumped up with, that, you know, some of the things he's done in the last three weeks. Which I've seen some of these reports going, I want to hear more about that. So before, Leave. Make sure you rub up against Gary right now. Okay. <laughs> He's got it going on. So Gary, you don't mind. Or stay there with you. You want to read for another Can I ask a uh, question to John first? Yeah, in, in creating the virtual tour, can I put multiple photos up, or does it have to be one at a time? That's kind of slow and tedious. What you do is you you browse, add, 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 and then upload. Yeah. You can make a list and then upload. Okay. Now, if you do 25 or 30 at a time, it's going to take a little while to upload because you're putting up pretty large images. Yeah. We want larger images for the, the size of the tour itself. I was just doing drag and drop in Firefox, and I was trying to grab 25 and drag them over, and it won't allow me to do that. It's an improvement that I'll, I see what you're saying. But if you got them all in a folder, and you, and you, I mean, it's, it's still fairly quick, but you're right. If you'd like to grab five or six in one one thing and pull them, that's not, that's not a capability right now. Okay. But we'll, we'll work on that as well. So is this our permanent location for sure, or is still, <coughs> you know, are we going to have cards in uh, is this a permanent location or a I hope so. Uh, Galen, right here, for some reason, thought we shouldn't keep stepping over the cubicles that were here for the last two weeks. So he uh, put a group together, put them together in like a day. So, <laughs> the checks in the mail. Hey, <laughs> 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 looking that up again here. Um, what was the other uh, question? Oh, permanent. Yeah, we're on. Uh, Right now we're in the uh, month uh, month two of seven free months of rent here. Uh, the lease that we have is for uh, 1,600 square feet right across the uh, parking lot. So it's, uh, what's that? By the fountain. Yeah, by the fountain. Yeah, real, real nice office, but you know this is 4,000, that's 1,600. So uh, the model that we're kind of looking at for for franchises and different things would be, would be smaller offices uh, all over the place, which seems to be more of an industry trend. With the exception of Keller, right now, they still want to get 700 agents into a small office space, which is a good model. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the plan. Um, David Boner, who, how many of you have met our CEO, David Boner? He, um, he, he, you know, the things in Texas are a little different than here sometimes. And I said, yeah, I think the, the leasing agent, we're a smart guy, I've known him for a long time, a friend of a friend, and, uh, you know, he did it really smart. The, the, the space that was available, he said, that's not going to be ready until the first of the year, but I know you guys have some needs, so why don't you just go ahead and move into this office that's vacant. Watch this guy's move in there, and, and part of the lease agreement will give you seven months free rent. Well, you know what he's hoping, is that when we get close to seven months free rent, that we're going to just stay here. And, and you know, we, we call that the puppy dog clothes, right? So I talked to David Boner, and I said, yeah, that'll puppy dog clothes. You know, how many of those come back to the pet store? But David Boner said, I, and he, he might be watching this, so I've got to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> don't, Hi, David. Yeah, don't forward this to PETA. But, uh, um, he said, oh, no, the puppy dog clothes we use in Texas is you just come over and you take your little puppy and you set it on the table and you pull out your hammer and say, oh. if we're going to take it. And then everybody agrees <laughs> right away. And I said, wow, in California, that's not quite the way it works here. But, uh, so anyway. Long answer, I think we're going to stay here. We're renting out the other offices. I, I kind of envision the, uh, the cubicles. Probably, we're, we're trying to figure out the number. Probably somewhere around 100, 150. Have a, a cubicle. And then you uh, probably move them on over to here. We can get, that's uh, 12. Probably get 20 in here pretty comfortably. Um, want to have, I don't want to get to the stage that, that happened in some of the other offices where they 
agents were charged to come in and use their own office. I just, I, that was a concept I wasn't too familiar with. Uh, so we don't want to do that. Uh, but when we get closer to it, if it looks like we need to be at a certain number, we may just you know, do a bake sale. <laughs> make sure we can stay. So I don't know. I, I, I would get if I had a bet right now. I guess we're probably going to stay here, based on all the the different uh, you know, franchises that we're talking about, agents that are looking to come over. I think we'll be able to support this as a as a corporate office for quite a while. But if not, uh, it's not a bad fallback position. You know, Steve likes the other office much better. And, you know, I mean, it's just it's a real nice place to be, and, and there's nobody in Gold River right now, so it's kind of not a bad place to be. It's pretty convenient for everybody that goes up the 50 corridor. Some of the agents who live in Rockland don't like it as well as they like some of the other offices. But, yeah. We'll still go down to Summit funding. Yeah, yeah, some of it looks like, uh, so far we've been real pleased with the relationship so far. That's a pretty good sized meeting room. They can, they can hold up to 110. And, um, and then we can have other places that we can meet if we need to be. So. Yeah. 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 <coughs> <coughs> All right, so I want to give you guys a quick background my coming over to Connect. And one of the things that I saw when this kind of started was everybody decided that they were going to build this organization, this team, and they thought that they were going to really benefit from bringing all these people over. But what they, what my opinion is, people didn't really add any value to the people that were bringing them as part of their team. So I have a pretty decent sized team and I always tried to add value to my team. People came to Connect thinking they were going to come here and it was going to be a better place to do business. Ultimately, we still all have to do real estate every day. You can't just go to one company or work for one person and think that my life's going to be better. You have to put in some effort. And we are in a position right now in our industry that there is not a lot of business out there for everybody unless you go out and find it. So if you guys want to go out and try and find business, you have to find somebody that has something going on. So I happen to work for an investment group. Um, and I work for the individual originally. They went to uh, New York. They were hired uh, Daniel Claiborne and Bear River to Claiborne Real Estate. Okay, so Daniel Claiborne and another gentleman by the name of Tom Christie were taken to New York and offered regional positions of California. So their goal is to buy almost everything they can in real estate. We've hit some speed bumps. We've had to decline some offers and things like that. But currently, I'll give you guys some numbers based on the people that work within THR. That's the name of the company that I work with. One organization, which I won't name names, has 150 deals in contract, and in one week made $137,000 in commission. So there's a possibility to make money. You guys just have to go out and find the deals. So if you had a buyer that was all cash and said, I will close on just about everything, and their underwriting is finally smoothed out, all you have to do is bring the deal to me and say, hey, can you underwrite this? Will it work for us? So I know Kristen's brought me a couple, and there's a, I've run the numbers. Here's where I'm at. This is what I'm comfortable with based on the information I have. Does it work? It doesn't. And the two that we have, it was, no, we're not quite there. So they're not going to buy everything. Um, unfortunately, Tammy and I had a deal together that I thought was going to work. They said no underwriting guidelines have changed. We have to make some adjustments. So we had to cancel that transaction. So they're not buying everything. Don't get me wrong. They have certain numbers they have to hit. But if you guys go out to any house, neighborhood, organization, anywhere you can find that someone's got a house, if there's a possibility that house is for sale. Um, you can walk through any neighborhood and figure there's a $150,000 property, $200,000 property, whatever it is. All you have to do is knock on the door and ask if that person is thinking about selling, interested in selling. It doesn't have to be a foreclosure. It could be a trust sale. Maybe they're not thinking about selling. Maybe a family member is. Anything like that. And I will take a reduced commission on my side so that the listing side gets a bigger portion of the commission. Because ultimately, if I have 80 people or 50 people in this room bringing me deals, I will be fine with a smaller piece. <laughs> you guys can have the bigger piece. So. Condos. No condos. No attached. Fixtures. No, not really. Yes, sort of. No major fixtures. Yeah, aesthetic paint and carpet is totally fine. Um, the one that Sam and I had, in my opinion, the house is perfect outside of carpet and paint. But it's 1950s pink in the, um, in the bathrooms. Even though it's in perfect condition and the tile is, I mean, not one single crack, they said, no, we have to have it exactly a certain <coughs> They have currently a 1,000 properties that they are getting ready to rehab. A 
and they will all be very cookie cutter, corporate looking, white tile, oak cabinets, blah, blah, blah. So there are certain things that wasn't originally presented to me that now I've gone through their process. We've already closed about 15, so, and I have about 12 or 13 more in escrow. So they're starting to open up, but here's the thing, they have people that comb the S MLS every single day. So don't think you're gonna find something on the MLS. You gotta go out and try and find it, build the relationships, people from your bank, your dentist, whatever it is. Someone you know that's thinking about selling kids' sports teams, whatever it is. That's the stuff that they really want to try and find. So, but that's my scoop. Sorry about my voice. I'm not feeling too hot. Um, <clears throat> but in this industry right now, we have to go out and find the work. It's not going to come to you. Connect isn't, hey, this company is so great that they're just going to, they're not giving us leads. They're not doing anything like that. It is a better place to do business.